Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. As many of you might know, there are farmers' protests right now in many European countries. For example, in France, but also they are um, protesting in Brussels, in Belgium. And um, we have heard in recent years also about trucker protests and uh, also the Yellow West movement in France should be mentioned in this context. And also, at the moment, still as we speak right now, <laughs> or as I speak, um, there are farmers' protests here in Germany. You might not hear a lot about that, because our mainstream media, um, together with our political establishment, they are very, very hard at work to um, yeah, basically... Um, fill all media channels with other news um, to deflect from the farmer protests that are currently going on in Germany and of course so that the people don't understand why the farmers are protesting. Um, and what I want to um, yeah, put some spotlight on today is not the individual protests, um, maybe I can say a couple of words about that in the beginning, but um, I want to raise the question, or I want to, to um, emphasize, that in many, many different countries there are very similar protests at the moment, and that is for a reason. Um, that is not coincidence, of course. And um, it's also not that the farmers have um, kind of um, yeah, uh, collaborated here or coordinated all these um protests in these different countries. No, they are really from the farmer's side. They are more or less independent of each other. Um, there is no evidence or I have never heard anything about a um, concerted effort or an international um, or, yeah, committee of farmers that would coordinate all these, all these different protests in order to destabilize Europe or something like that. Uh, if you have information about that, uh, post it down below, but I have no idea about that. So, um, uh, and this becomes very clear when we look at the causes. So, in France I have read that one of the reasons is that they try to ban a certain pesticide in France that is allowed in other European countries. And that is unfair uh, competition then, and this is why the French farmers protest. In Germany I have told you that one of the reasons, but not the only reason of course, is um, tax increases for farmers. That um, their vehicles will be taxed and um, their, um, yeah, the diesel for agricultural diesel will be taxed at a higher rate or yeah, massive tax increases for farming vehicles basically, among other things. Then, in the Netherlands, I shouldn't forget about the Dutch, uh, they had massive farmers' protests and there it was, I think, about nitrate levels, so basically how much fertilizer they're allowed to use and also that they basically try to reduce massively meat farming, so cows and pigs and whatnot, so uh, less meat production. Yeah? But uh, when you look at the broader context here, you see, as I said already, this is not just in one country, there are many, many things happening, many different things happening in different countries, but they all aim into the same direction. They want to make farming less profitable. They want to drown um, yeah, independent farmers in regulations, red tape, um, basically um, uh, bureaucratic um, hassle so that it becomes more bothersome and they have to use more time and money resources to fulfill um, or to, to work according to government regulations and then of course taxes and um, telling them how they are allowed to use their land so that they need to um, have a certain percentage of their land um, unfarmed basically which is of course again cutting into their profits and here is another thing I really want to mention. Profit, that is the pay of the farmer, of course. The farmer is an entrepreneur. That means um, the left always demonizes profit. And they say we need an economy without profit. But yeah, profit for the farmer, for the entrepreneur, that is pay. Would a factory worker work for 40 hours a week in a factory without a single cent of payment? I don't think so. And this payment, what's putting food on the table for the farmer, is the profit his farm makes. So without profit, no farmers. Yeah? <laughs> they are basically self-employed or 
entrepreneurs, right? Uh, so that's very simple and easy to understand. Um, also, um, I want to add that uh, the trucker protests that we've seen in uh, Canada, for example, uh, they are much more alike to the farmer protests because um, if I have heard correctly, at least in Canada, um, yeah, in, in America, so in the US, many truckers, uh, yeah, also in Canada, I think, they own their trucks. Yeah? In Germany, the truck drivers are mostly employees and uh, the truck belongs to the company and they just drive the truck. But uh, overseas, a lot of them own their trucks and they are basically then self-employed. So um, what, what does that mean now? So um, I think that the EU and um, globalists, that they want to launch attacks on um, families, on independent people, small businesses and family-owned businesses who control and own the land, food production and transportation. Yeah? There might be many other examples of key infrastructure, but food and transport, these are very, very key um, sectors. If you control them, then you control the people. Then you can, you know, you know where it ends, right? You can put them in pods and make them eat the bugs. That's what it's all about, I guess. And taking away the land of the farmers and cutting out the farmer from the food production process and uh, turning it all into a communist um, state-run machine, which they did in communism. Like uh, in Eastern Germany, they called the um, yeah, industrial complexes, they called them kombinat. And then one of these combinats was uh, then responsible for making cars or making semiconductors or making this and that. Yeah? And uh, in the agricultural field, they called it kolchose. And that is, yeah, a you, you, you take the land from the farmers, you make the farmers employees or, or you just uh, force them into the cities, into some skyscraper high-rise buildings and then make them factory workers or something. Um, in China, they did the same thing. They chased the farmers away from their land and then the state ran the farms. And uh, the people who worked there were just state-employed farm hands, basically. And, yeah, this is what's going on. And they use different methods in different countries. So in the Netherlands, they use nitrate regulations. In Germany, they raise the taxes. In France, they want to ban some pesticides. But it all aims at the same thing, to make farming unprofitable for families. And their their pockets aren't that deep. Their margin of er error is not so high. So if if you change the status quo a little bit in the direction of less profitable, <laughs> more hassle, more government regulation, more costs, uh, while prices are still regulated, for example, it's not a free market anyway, then you, you, you know what's happening. I mean, it's a deterministic system at this point. You know that if you do that as a legislator, you drive these families out of business and they have to stop uh, their farming. Um, they, they, they have to... Um, yeah, close the farm and go somewhere else. And then the state will, of course, take the land and build some shelters for new arrivals here or something. Yeah, And um, I also want to add, and maybe I should look into that more deeply, but um, all these rules for our food, like, oh, you're not allowed to use this pesticide and our food should be healthy. All this is well and good, yes. Um, I also want to eat healthy food without any poison in it, obviously. But... I just want to tell you that the people who pass these laws, they're not interested in that. And I tell you why. Because if the state would run our farms, what do you think is the first thing they do? They would bring back all the poison. And if um, they have to import food then from other countries, like Ukraine, for example, which they are doing at the moment already, um, which is one of the reasons why farmers also protest, um, <laughs> do you think that they... Uh, would keep all these regulations, all these labor laws and all these uh, laws uh, with respect to chemicals and pesticides and all these things, fertilizer? No, <laughs> they can use all that stuff. So that means in the end what that does is that our food will uh, become 
affected or uh, yeah will go down in quality again because of all these pesticides and these industrial farming methods but the food will come from halfway around the globe where they don't care about these things so this is how you can easily tell that the people who are in charge here they they don't care about the quality of our food and and and, and healthy um healthy diets and all that stuff that's that's just a pretense to drive farmers out of business really because i read a nice slogan here in germany ist der farmer ruin uh, ist der bauer ruiniert wird dein essen importiert yeah when you ruin the farmers your food will be imported and that's what's going on all right so this is what i think i think in all these countries we see the governments are taking very very different steps um different measures but the goal is always the same drive the farmers out of business so they can control food production that the state can take over and yeah then the state will directly control what food is produced where and how much of it and where it will go and these pesky little farming families will be completely cut out of the equation and uh, we literally have to eat what the government tells us to eat then they have full control of what we eat then and this is where it's going oh, exciting times servus kameraden